So this is me wasting time, me considering the lapel. Are your lapels sexy? Okay, lapel is not a sexy word, but it's part of the jacket, you know, that flips open to expose the shirt. And more importantly, the throat and the chest, lapels are positively erotic. They are the suggestive, <coughs> soft part of the suit. The French call the point where the lapel and the collar meet the gorge, the throat, a lovely word used by the English as well. The gourds suggest mystery, depth, danger. One could fall into the gorge and never come back up. Interesting, this is also called the gorge in both French and English tailoring, and this is called the gorge. So they're not exactly the best linguists in the world because they're just, yes, the gorge. No, the other gorge. Uh, no, they do this. Originally, there was no lapel on the coat. A man either wore his coat opened or buttoned up over his sternum and up to his neck, which then would be, you know, accentuated with a ruff or a lace collar or a cravat. Then it dawned upon some young men to leave the top buttons open. This practice of artful dishevelment seemed to amplify the dashingness of the suit. It gave the wearer a romantic, windswept look, as if his clothes had been slightly undone by vigorous horseback riding. <laughs> it became formalized when the front flaps of the coat were permanently folded out. Now, some assert that the suit can't be a real suit without a lapel. And Hollander, in her authoritative study, Sex and Suits, makes the argument that the suit really comes into being when tailors master the lapel and collar. This is sometime between 1750 and 1800. She writes, its collar was forced by clever cut, steaming and stiffening to curve up and around the neck to fold over and open in front, and to form lapels that would obediently lie down and align themselves smoothly with the body of the coat. This perfectly tailored collar and flat-lying lapel still forms the most distinctive element of the modern suit coat. And it became the formal sign of modernity in dress. So that's Anne Hollander. And I love it. I love her diction. The tone of sadomasochism <laughs> says it all. You can hear the repeated crack and slackening of the whip when she uses the words stiffening, curve, obediently. <laughs> <laughs> Why would a designer denude a garment of these wild energies? Right? A uh, bit of a history lesson. You know, there was a time. Uh, Hardy Amy's tried to get rid of the lapel, like the narrow jacket. There were other forms. It was also the ghillie. Who remembers the ghillie collar? It's the shirt collar, but used on a suit jacket, right? There were always these attempts. The suit, men wearing suits, and the suit itself has consistently resisted this full closure because the closure gets rid of that incredible shape. When I say that a lapel is folded, I'm wrong. With a fold, one thinks of the harsh line or edge of the wing of a paper airplane. True tailors actually call the turning of the lapel from the inside out the roll. Who's Scottish? Can someone roll their R's for me? Can someone say roll? Can someone roll an R for me? Roll? I, yeah, I heard a purr. Thank you. Done properly, the lapel will not look folded out at all. Instead, it will roll. roll. Thank you. <laughs> like, like the blooming flower petal. A great lapel should remind one of the bee-stung lips of Angelina Jolie. <laughs> All fullness and sensuality. They are wool labia. Opening out with an irresistible lushness, 
with great lapels, the most masculine article in the man's arsenal. The suit comes alive with a feminine opening, which just explains the enduring phallic nature of the essential suit accessory, the long tie. <laughs> lapels can be, should be, kinky, dangerous, sleek, potent. To wit, if someone touches your suit sleeve, you're onto something good. If he or she strokes your lapel, the deal has been sealed. <laughs> Hail a taxi and have at thee. All men deserve beautifully rolled lapel.